let's all get seated and start. We're running a couple minutes behind. Uh, today, we're pleased to welcome our uh, own Dr. Anshang Wang to talk today. He's, uh, the title of his talk is A New Method to Study Quantum Mechanics and the 2020 Physics Nobel Prize on Quantum Entanglement. Uh, Dr. Anshang Wang received his bachelor and master's degrees in physics from Shandong Normal University at uh, Luocheng and Northeast Normal University in China in 1983 and 1986, respectively. In 1991, he received his PhD degree from uh, Ioniana University in Greece on nonlinear interactions of gravitational waves, which in 2020 was published as a research monograph by World Scientific. Between 1992 and 2003, he worked at the Sao Paulo University of, and uh, uh, Capenas Brazilian National Observatory and the State University of Rio de Janeiro as an assistant associate and full professor, respectively. He joined uh, our physics department in 2003. Uh, he's been working on both classical and quantum gravity and their applications to astrophysics and cosmology, and has published uh, an amazing 270 articles with more than 8,000 citations. Uh, recently, we've discovered that he is one of the 2% top cited world scientists over all science fields, according to a recent uh, release of Stanford University, recent as in the 10th of this month. Uh, he has supervised about 18 PhD students, 19 postdocs, and a dozen masters and undergraduate students. He was awarded the Baylor Outstanding Faculty in Research Award in 2009, and currently he's working on gravitational waves and black holes and loop quantum gravity and its applications to astrophysics and cosmology. Let's give Dr. Wong a round of applause. Of, of applause. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, dear, for, for uh, uh, introduction. So this is actually a uh, very uh, relaxed uh, talk because uh, I know most of you, uh, not some of you, in my quantum mechanics class, recently actually in a graduate class from all of my GR class. So this is actually. Uh, I changed a little bit of data because I tried to emphasize this uh, you use uh, quote as new, it's not a very new, new to us, physicists. Actually, for the mathematicians, they discovered this more than 50 years ago. So this actually, lots of things happen. That's why I think we should really work together with the mathematicians as close as possible. So they have lots of good stuff. Since I'm talking about quantum mechanics, so I will uh, again to uh, briefly introduce the uh, Nobel Prize this year for quantum entanglement. This is all connected with uh, Einstein theory. Like Einstein first uh, proposed the so-called EPR paradox. Because of this, actually, we really people start working on entanglement. So this actually. Uh, uh, I'm going to first, uh, let's, let's talk about this actor, uh, this year's Nobel Prize. So this actor, uh, you can see the quote is uh, for experiments with uh, entangled photons. It establishes the uh, wireless of a bell inequality and uh, pioneers quantum information science. This is really actually, I consider a very promising future for quantum information, quantum computation, all the things. So that's why I think one of the main reasons they got a Nobel Prize. So uh, I'm going to introduce actually what means bell equalities and also what means the entanglement. So this actually very simple when we consider some quantum systems. So uh, the first one, let's see, start from Einstein's uh, called EPR paradox. You know, Einstein can never believe in physical interpretation of statistics which means the probabilities. So that's why in 1935, he proposed like one sort of experiment. He said, okay, I'm beginning to prove quantum mechanics is not correct. So this actually is a, a basic idea. He said, okay, let's consider two electrons, let's see. It's a very simple case. Uh, uh, if I can always properly the two electrons, you know, because of a poly exclusion pulse, if you consider spins, one has to be up, another down, so which means always the total system, the spin will be zero. That's fine. So then you can say, okay, now he said, okay, let's prepare this. I'm going to move these two guys 
apart. We're not a measure. By definition, actually, those guys will keep spin always zero, no matter how far they are apart. Then, so this actually is the case because the spin is always conserved, right? Suppose there are no external uh, interaction or no interaction between them and uh, others. So this actually, then you can say, okay, according to quantum mechanics, if no of them touch any of the, uh, the, uh, the electrons, let's say, uh, uh, Alex and Bob, then there's always a possibility to measure the, uh, each of them either up and down. So I call up spin, the, let's say, plus one, uh, down spin is minus one, right? So this actually always, uh, uh, this is according to uh, statistical interpretation, always the case. Now the problem is, let's say, once they are far away, Alex suddenly decides to measure the electrons. They suppose the electrons, let's say, in the point in the z direction, uh, plus in the z direction, positive direction, then now we know, according to quantum mechanics, the wave function will collapse into the eigenfunction of the electrons up. Then, no matter how far Bob from Alex, Bob will always measure his electrons pointing down, right? So, now this is true accurate. This is true accurate. Nothing to do with the distance. You can put them as far as you want. Einstein and his collaborator argued, "What's happening?" If the distance is far away, even light signals cannot connect one to another. So Alex measured the, 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 the photos, the, the electrons here up, then uh, Bob and Miller measure has to be down. So if the, the, the time difference, even light cannot uh, connect to the event. So how the one electron transform from this to another one, make sure another one always down. So this is actually, the, the famous EPR paradox. So uh, when a very early be, uh, time, actually, people think this is simply a philosophical argument. And uh, uh, really, actually, Einstein tried to show people quantum mechanics was not correct. So uh, later, in 1964, actually, Bell, Bell actually was a follower for Einstein. He actually said, OK, let's consider so-called hidden variable theory. So hidden variable theory is a, it's not, I don't think this is a very general argument. It's different from a, a, a quantum mechanics. So what a bell actually consider following, let's consider, let's see if I have uh, uh, Alex here, measure actually uh, uh, the, the, the spin celeste particle A, and the after two directions, can be X, Y, Z, any, X, Y, Z, all combinations. The same time, actually, uh, the same thing actually for Bob. Bob does not need to measure along the same direction as Alex. Uh, Alex. So, so then you can say, okay, Alex, uh, uh, Alex measure, let's say, one direction I call one, another direction two. Bob will do the same thing, but not necessarily one, two. One also one, two, but not necessarily the same as uh, X, Y, Z, as uh, Alex did. In any case that we consider this actual combination, A1, B1, A1, B2, A2, B1, minus term. You can see if I combine the first term with the third term, this one, and the second with the first one, this one. We know either A equal B, A1 equal A2 because either R, this, all of them are, all of them are down, they equal, or opposite sign. But in any case, let's say if this is the first the case, this second term equals zero, this guy is equal, either minus two or plus two. But this guy can be minus one plus one, or totally either minus two plus two, right? So this is a very simple argument. Now you can say, okay, I'm going to actually may consider this many times, not only a single time. Then randomly you won't expect it not, it's all zero. But on the list it's not bigger than two, because the two is a large. So this is actually one simple example Bill's uh, so-called Bill's equality. Now you can see, one, like what I said, when you de derive this acre, there's some, there are two fundamental uh, sums. And here I just mentioned one. One is uh, Alex's choice of X cannot really influence Bob's result or vice versa. So which means that this comes from the ideas of hidden variable theorem. 
So you do not need to actually understand what's that one, or necessarily I do not understand that story either. But it's a very general argument. It's so different from quantum mechanics. So now, quantum mechanically, this actually bond can be well related. We can use one simple example. Like what I said, you can prepare one, let's say, if A along negative direction, B has to be a positive direction, right? So this is actually spin one, or also police uh, exclude principle. So another acre will be plus up, down. So this acre has uh, the same uh, uh, probability, one half. This acre, one will square root, just to make the wave function were normalizable. So this is a very simple case. Then you can uh, substitute this acre. Now I'm going to choose. Alex will measure the polarization one, the one along x direction and the two along z direction. But the Bob will do the difference. One is in the negative x plus z direction, another in the x minus y direction. It's arbitrary. You can always do this. Quantum mechanically, there's no difference. So once you do this, you can calculate some of the words. Calculate this actually two times square root of two. This actually obviously will let the Bell's uh, uh, inner equality. So this is actually, like what I said before, to, uh, 60, uh, 1962 was a mainly argument philosophical. But Bell put this acre into a really mathematical formula, so then we can prove if it's correct or not. So the first one come to 1972. Actually, they designed this acre before 1972, if I remember correctly, 1969. But 72, they really carry out the experiment. The first in, in, in uh, 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 Berkeley lab. So they find actually, this is the, the collusion. Our data in group with the quantum mechanic will let the restricted to, oh, sorry, uh, uh, will let those restrictions, which means builds inequalities with high statistical accuracy, such as provide strong evidence uh, against the uh, uh, local high name variable theory, which is I just mentioned. So this actually, later people find the distance between these two, two particles is too short to be actually really considered consider, uh, no local, no localities of the entanglement. So this actually comes from the group from actually France, led by a Professor Alain Aspect. So they did actually this uh, similar experiment, what they found is the following. The results are in good agreement with the quantum mechanics predications, but will later build in equality by five sigma deviations. So experimentalists know five sigma is good enough to dis declare discovery. So this is what they get. This is like 1982. And in 1989, actually, this is a group from uh, Austria, uh, led by Professor Anto Zillinger. I hope my pronunciation is correct. So they actually ex completely exclude the possibility of a null localities of the entanglement, and they found what is a, we experimentally entangle freely propagating particles that are never physically interact uh, with one another, or which has never been dimensionally covered by any other. Uh, uh, means. This is demonstrated that quantum entanglement requires the entangled particles need to come from a, 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 sorry, this should be common sources now for, uh, to have uh, interaction in the past. So this is the really totally proof of the entanglement. So this actually uh, get a Nobel Prize. So I would like to point, this is the first also now, this year they found uh, the entanglement, the larger distance, more than 100 kilometers in China. So this actually, this is the largest distance we find so far for the entanglement. Uh, that's why they got a Nobel Prize. Okay, so uh, very brief interaction. If you are interested, you can read a lot of articles. I think uh, it's nice uh, uh, to know this. So uh, now I'm going to actually come to my talk. This really apply a measure that we, uh, I mean, actually, uh, uh, Jerry Close and team and our students we developed in the last uh, 10 years or so. 
So the main idea is to try to apply this measure to uh, quantum uh, cosmology because the WKB measure I'm going to show you uh, were not applied. So this accurate, let's consider a shrinking equation, one dimensional. So you are very familiar. This is a particle with a mass m, total energy E, and a, a move in a potential. So I, I pick particular theta and this accurate use E equal potential. Later I call this a turning point. This is exactly the point that you can see the WKB measure acre divergence, which means WKB measure does not apply. So uh, this acre WKB condition, sometimes we call JWKB, depends on which one we are considering. If you talk about mathematics, then you may not call JWKB. This acre is uh, an so ROG solution, actually. Okay? <clears throat> So uh, like what I said, this acre, there is a turning point here. You will see WKB measure does not uh, apply. This acre, is, uh, this is a turning point I call E equal phi, which means E equal potential. And also, when we consider, for example, we consider, let's say, hydrogen, this acre, two problems become one, then the potential near uh, uh, the center becomes uh, a singular, so like this. So uh, if you are familiar with quantum mechanics, you will see this accurate exactly comes from angle momentum part, with error is the angle momentum uh, uh, number. So clearly, if error different from zero, these guys were diverging, then the duplicate measure also doesn't work. So actually, the really motivation for us to work on this, uh, when we apply this to loop quantum cosmology, there's a loss of a turning point. You see, when you have this acre in the one approach they call it a hybrid, this is a Dresden metric, then you can see in this case several peaks, they are almost about one. Here you acre some reach 10 to 11. Definitely WKB doesn't work. Then you can say, okay, no problem. WKB normally just divide into many regions and match them together. This actually worth a word WKB uh, did when we learn quantum mechanics. But the problem is the margin depend on the point. The errors also depend on point. You can imagine here I have only two peaks. What's happening if I have thousands? Then you were, you, you cannot really the errors become the iron control. So that's actually the main reason. So we actually propose to work on this. So there are also for uh, improvement. So actually, I just measured some of them complex, uniform, duplicated measure. So the ones we use actually developed by Oliver in the 50s, uh, 50s to 70s. This is called uniform asymptotic approximation. So you just remember the name. Later, I'm going to talk about what this means. So this is a paper. It's the first one, 55, 7, 56, 75. And then this actually is the, the book he published. So, uh, yeah, this actually just to give a very brief introduction. Actually, I'm going to, uh, my talk will divide into three parts. One is just introduce the measure, then try to apply it to quantum mechanics, which we are familiar, and also beyond, which means actually we have been applied to gravitational waves, local quantum cosmology, the quantum normals of black holes. So, we find this really a very useful, powerful measure. So the main reason because the second order differential equation. So physics always uh, uh, like second order. Another uh, uh, reason why second order because you already know there is a, 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 a so-called ultra grandesque instability. If you have one differential equation which has time derivative more than second order, then this system is not stable. So it always has a ghost. So this acre was discovered in 1850. By that time, I think it's, uh, I forget, it's a perfect Hungarian mathematician. But in physics, you know, what, which year we found? This acre in 1977. Uh, the student of a Professor Desha called Professor Stera, when he studied quantum gravity, they find fourth order gravity always has a ghost. This is exactly the uh, austro grandesque theorem tells us this is not stable. Okay, this is actually just simply one example. So uh, let's come to a uh, part of, uh, yeah, before this actually, this is the collaborators. The first uh, author you already know. So this is actually Dr. Kirsten, uh, same from mathematics. This is actually our former postdocs. This is actually our graduate students and postdocs. 
These are also our graduate students. So this is for very you know they are here. This is actually Jiang from uh, this is Dr. Kalura's uh, graduate students. This is uh, Jamel and Ru. We have been working on this uh, recently. <coughs> uh, so uh, just actually this measure I just uh, divided into three acre step. It's a very important steps. The first step you. Remember, we have uh, E minus V, the potential. That's actually one function. But uh, we introduced two arbitrary functions, G and Q. Not arbitrary, G and Q equal E minus V. Why we introduce two functions? Because we want to minimize our errors by properly choosing uh, 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 this actually G and Q. So this is the, the, the first ingredients to do this. Second one, uh, sorry, this also there's a, you see we introduced by hand our numbers. Lambda, I think when you study quantum mechanics, what I mean, there's a measure that we introduced called uh, another parameter. I think this is all similar to this guy. We call also lambda. But uh, we just introduced the last broker mark. When we, we expand in lambda later, we put a lambda equal one. Okay, so the same idea. So uh, then you can see, uh, this is actually our contribution, which is to combine all the measure with a so-called variation measure. In quantum mechanics, we learn variation measure it exactly to minimize the energy. So the energy actually gives us the ground, uh, ground state energy. This is the same idea. But we like apply here. We actually introduce several actual parameters A and B into G and Q. Later, we will minimize the errors by properly choose IMBN. So this is actually the first uh, uh, greatness we, 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 we actually put in. Then actually you just like what I said, expand the, the function in terms of power of the lambda, because lambda is larger than one, so you expand one over lambda. So you just start it order by order. So this is the first greatness, we introduced two operator functions and also uh, use the variable principles to minimize the error control function, which I will introduce later. Another important group is that they actually use this called a real transformation. This actually in mathematics, people use this very often. The idea is that instead of using the variables where I use introduce another new variable side. So where the function of a set, of course, to have a one-to-one -one map. I recur, this guy is always non-negative, which means monetary increase function. Now I'm uh, using another new function, U side, instead of a mu chi. Then you see the equation one just simply write this form. So this actually nothing more than mathematically equal. There's nothing new here. The problem is I'm going to later properly choose Q and P, uh, Q and G so that this term becomes small, minimal. This one. So this is actually the first step. So this is a uh, set defined inside. So uh, now you can see like what I said, if all this uh, size were small in compared with that term, we can actually simply ignore, sorry, oh. ignore this term, just solve this one. This is actually my, the first order approximation. So I solve this equation. Now this is also a very complex equation because the way dot g can be very complex function. So the problem is that we need to say that we want to solve this analytically. We need to properly choose this guy. So we can solve this analytically. Sometimes we use special function, that's fine. And also try to make this actually the first order approximation solution as close to the exact solution as possible. So how do we do this? Again, using variable principle to guarantee this point. <coughs> So this actually, uh, in order to see that, I'm going to first introduce this actually so-called error control function. You can see proposing a set over this guy. And then there's also the social error control function. When I prove a theory, I will use both of them. So later I will come back to the definitions. So then you can see, like what I said, okay, now we are going to, we have this actually, uh, sorry, we have this actually, uh, error control function, once we choose G, and this guy is a function of Q, then they are functions of a parameter A and B and N. So I'm going to actually minimize the error control function 
taking positive devices. So what you guys uh, a lot of software you just align quantum mechanics this is like exactly why why is the matter, right? We just use this one, then you just uh, minimize the errors, then all of the meantime you will recruit this guy's be finite, cannot be divergent. So once this token is certified, you just control construct your solutions. So what we found actually depend on the property of this guy G. Remember G is the, the leading term, and uh, this guy is actually makes the error control function as small as possible. So we find if a G has no single, no turning point, no zeros, you simply put this actually equal constant. But you see here the white dot square g, so g can be negative, positive. So that's why equal positive one, one g positive, negative one, one g negative. If I have one turning point, one zero, like e equal uh, potential, the wrong one point, I use like equal psi. One g equals zero, psi equals zero, so that's fine. Uh, one g positive, psi positive, and g negative, psi negative. So another accurate, just define this accurate, when we have two turning point, I will use uh, set zero minus, set zero square minus set square, this depends on the sign. So this accurate is a choice, like what I said, you see, the g equals zero point exactly the, where the WKB measure doesn't work. So this measure accurate focuses on the turning point. Try to get a better, solution near a turn point. Then matching the solution asymptotically. Just like totally opposite to WKB. Remember WKB, first you find the solution far away from a turning point. Then try to match the solution near a turning point. This is just the opposite. Uh, set zeros are constant. Yeah, so I didn't write it here. Actually, this is equal to the integration of square root of g from y1 to y2. y1, y2 is the two accurate turning point. Okay, good question, yeah. So once we choose that one, you will see this accurate, the first of the solution, for the first case, just simply give us, if a g is negative, this accurate oscillate. If a g is positive, this accurate, one part is exponential increasing, another part is exponential decreasing. If I carry this guy is equal psi, this is exactly the error differential equation. So we have two independent solutions. So A, I, B, I. Uh, one actor, we have two turning points. This actor will be used to modify parabolic and functions. So this is well defined. We can use a mathematical book to find other properties, including the asymptotic behavior and the turn, uh, uh, zero point and also uh, uh, expansion. Derivatives. So well now. So this is first road. So if you want to go to high road, you can you can do that. Actually, uh, this uh, in this uh, two paper we did this. For example, just to give one example, one turn point. Remember zero. First of all, one turn point is error function. So now you include error function plus error uh, the derivatives uh, of error function and uh, function A S B S. This is actually the second term, B, and the derivative of B, AS, BS. And AS, BS is given by this one. This is a so called recursion relations with a A0 equal 1. For example, if I want to get a B1, B0, put a S equal 0. This will be A0, A0, 1. A0 derivative is 0, so I know psi, I just know my B0, right? As this actor for set greater than zero, for set less than zero, I just do the same thing. Once I get a B zero, I can put it here, get my A one. Once I get a A one, I come here to get my B one. So this actor allow me <coughs> circulating to ask many others. Okay. This measure particular is very interesting in the sense, you can see the errors has an upper bound for error. Remember, when we learn WKB, we never know what's the errors, upper bound, right? So here I could said, okay, this is the upper bound of errors. So if we, you know, remember this anchor comes from error control function, in principle, we can calculate this guy. That's why we introduce variable principle to minimize the error control function, try to minimize this one. One simple example, 
just to understand, if my error function f is zero, of course this guy is equal to zero e to zero one one minus one zero. If this guy is absolute word less or equal to zero, this guy has to be zero, not include the word, which means I just hit the exact solution, right? Of course we never be so lucky. So the the main point is. Uh, you can minimize your f, which means minimize this one, minimize this one, minimize your errors, right? Once you minimize your errors, you can actually get a good uh, approximation. So this actually is an idea. This actually is what I said before. So if it equals zero, all of them is zero, but uh, normally we cannot do that. What we do, we just minimize the uh, error function f to get a g and a q. So, uh, now, actually, this is a general uh, uh, three main step. Any question about this part? So I'm going to actually apply it to quantum mechanics because we are very familiar with quantum mechanics. So uh, first, I'll apply to quantum mechanics. In particular, in quantum mechanics, we know quantum mechanics are very complicated. There are only very few examples where we have exact solutions. This is exactly the place we want to check our measure. So here I list the tables, the more than I can find cases down. But in this book, you can find uh, uh, most of the exact cases, we just choose uh, five cases. So you see here, the five cases, this is a potential, you get an uh, exact solution. So what do we want to say, okay, can we use our measure, the same time WKB, then compare with the exact result to see which one is better, okay? Uh, so the first one, let's is hydrogen. Hydrogen, this is a potential. We know, like what I said, we know exact solution. Then you can find the eigenvalues of energy, for example. This is the, the exact solution. But if you use WKB, uh, yeah, this is the exact solution you will find. You, you can you will find it from our textbook. Uh, uh, the, the textbook I use, you can easily find this expression. So if you use WKB, you get accurate the first order approximation, then you can calculate the eigenvalues of the energy, you get this one, which is different from this. But the problem is, uh, this actual famous mathematician is called Langer. In 1934, he said, if you replace arrow, multiply arrow plus one by this quantity, you will get an exact solution. Why? Nobody knows. So you just say, okay, if you do this, you get an exact solution, right? So, he just, you know, his mathematics was supposed to work smart. He just guessed this one again. So, remember, in our case, actually, we tried to make our error composition finite, minimize. Using this candidate, you will see this is key exactly given by this one. This has to be minus one fourth. When we started the matter of the paper, the very first could not believe it. it said, show us why this is exactly. We actually use one appendix show this is exactly choice. If this choice, then you can see this is exactly what I actually like long as a long actually made multiplication. Exactly we get the same. So of course this actually is the physical uh, the still mathematical interpretation say, okay, minimize the errors you get it. But unless a better understanding to the like, simply replace that like, number by another one. So this is like, one case. Of course, you will find to the first order, you will, we get exactly our uh, measure gives exactly the same result as uh, exact solutions. I'm going to give the rest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have lots of examples. So, a very good question, yeah. This is actually a harmonic oscillator, right? This is actually, no, we also know exact solution. Then you use WKB, you can get the wave function, then actually uh, find out the energies, discrete energies, you get this one. Uh, you already know the answer, so this actually will be different from the exact one. Again, use what I said, the error function has to be finite and minimized this is always the only choice, even for this case. Then you can see our result get exactly one. So, uh, so this is actually one case you can actually go on to consider 
uh, other cases. So this aircraft, so-called PD potential, this aircraft, the exact result, WKB result, which is different, but if you use our measure, you will find this is a choice, then you get an exact result. Okay. Uh, I, I will not repeat again. Actually, uh, this actually, uh, Ben, to answer your question, this actually is all the potential we consider. So this actually is the choice when we consider the error control function. You can see we actually, even to the first order, we get a very energy. Remember, in quantum mechanics, energy does not really sensitive depend on the wave function. So that's why you see, even to first order, we, we get. But once you come to the wave function, you do have some problems. This actually is the application I'm going to show you in other programs. Uh, okay, so uh, application to cosmology. Just to give you a little bit of history, because this actually also tells us really, I want to emphasize, we needed to work with the mathematicians as close as possible. Because they have a lot of good stuff, but we do not know. Only after many years we discovered. So you can see, like what I said, this uh, all over, perfect all over discovery theory proposed this uh, accurate in 65, uh, 56. So the first application all is in 2002, 46 years. So this acre, what they did here? They apply to consider acre cosmological perturbations. So normally people use WKB. So they, they did this, of course, they published uh, PIR. So uh, actually, later in 2004, 2005, this first of all, they extend to the high order. In, uh, actually, some years later, this is a French group, uh, actually, they consider K inflation. And uh, in 2009, this is Japanese group, they consider actually how leaf theory. This is actually the time of uh, uh, Trucker Maya testing because I was working with how uh, Java leaf theory. I said, okay, that's very good uh, 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 measure, very powerful. So this is like a WKB cannot apply this case, like what I said, the low surface bumpers. So, uh, but so far, I realized all the of them consider only has one turning point. The real problem actually is a three turning point problem. You see here I have three zeros, right? Here I have a one zero, two zero. This is actually called double root. In this case, one zero, but two, uh, uh, two actually a major root. So we was lucky really in 2013, uh, we got a postdoc, Tao Acre, joined us through Casper, work, working together with uh, Jerry Klaus and me and the team. So we said, okay, let's work on this problem. This is a very interesting problem. Tao Acre was excellent. He just immediately generalized to this, uh, this case is actually, we wrote a, uh, uh, we got a result next, the same year, actually. Next year, published. Uh, then, actually, uh, a year later, actually, we generate higher order first to case one, case uh, B, and case C, all the cases. So here I want to show you, you can see uh, the, the solid red line is numerical. Or you can see the exact solution, because we do not have a exact numerical. Huh? This actually, a blue, a blue dot is the first order. This is going to be orange actually the second road, the yellow dot is the third road. So here you cannot see the difference. This actually amplified the part. This actually first road, this is the second road, the yellow uh, green one, the third road. You see they are extremely well with the numeric solution. So we found actually the error is no larger than 0 0.15. And this is the case we do not know. We just compare with the exact, but with the numeric solution. So uh, uh, later, actually, uh, we can reconsider the case. This is actually in loop of quantum cosmology. Loop of quantum cosmology, so far, there are three, four different approaches. One of them was actually ruled out by this exact result, because uh, this is called the formal algebra approach. So if you use this one, you get uh, the perturbation. This is the equation. It looks uh, very complicated, but you just remember one thing. You see here is W. W actually normally uh, in the Einstein server, this is equal one. But here there's a modification. This modification is not a very small. You see here, rho C is a constant. And rho is the actual energy density can vary from zero to very large volumes. 
So one rho equal rho c, you can see this guy has become minus one. It, now, if a rho less than a half a rho c is positive, zero negative. Why this is important? Mathematically, one corresponds to hyperbolic equation, another case corresponds to elliptic. If you talk to mathematician, I talk with them several times, they always like, it. no, we do not know how to deal because this is extremely difficult. This is called changing the types of uh, the equations. I talk with the people from a uh, uh, better physics department, uh, talk with people from other universities, including the ones from China. They said this is a very challenging problem. But the uh, problem is uh, analytically. So you can do this always in numerical. So this is actually the French group that did this. They impose the condition here, then solve the numerical solution later compare with the observations. So I want to emphasize here, because when this omega becomes negative, the hyperbolic equation becomes elliptic. Now, one case we have boundary condition, the hyperbolic will be equation, we have a neutral condition. When you have a mixture, this is called boundary plus initial condition. So that's actually very complicated. So they find, okay, you see, this actually the dot of the gr, the dot. This actually the first upper line is for the scalar probability perturbation. This is for tensor perturbation. You know, in Einstein theory, we have a scalar perturbation means the same v. When we uh, the Galois cycle was formed by scalar perturbation, the gravitational wave was formed by tensor perturbation, which is the primordial gravitational wave we have not observed yet. But in any case, you can see. GR is always decreasing, but uh, LQG is uh, increasing. So this is uh, obviously not considered with observations. So this is uh, actually, this is the uh, people, they propose this measure. Later they say, okay, our measure cannot give the consistent result. They try to find out what's happening. This is uh, actually the time we joined the, the studies. We say, okay, what's happening? Let's use our measure. Our idea is, uh, we we'll first get the uh, approximate solution. Once we get approximate solution, we have our two arbitrary functions, alpha k, beta k. Then we say, okay, can we properly choose alpha k, beta k so that our solution is consistent with our observations? This is the question we want to answer. So first, instead of uh, imposing condition on this phase, we impose here. The reason why, because this point and onwards, everything is clear, mathematically clear, physically clear. Mathematically clear means that it's a equation is hyperbolic. So you, you need to impose the initial conditions. So now we say, okay, let's impose the initial conditions here, then compare with the observations. So after first we use our measure, we, we actually find this is a choice of Q to minimize the error control function. Then once we get a key, we can find a solution. This is actually one turning point. You already know one turning point is error function. So this is a combination of error function. So you can see this is actually the blue dot is numerical, red dot is our approximate solution. This is quite very good. So this is for scalar, this is for tensor perturbations. Okay. So once we have the solution, we say, okay, like what I said, we just uh, Look for the initial condition and the silent point. Which kind of initial condition can lead to the observ consistent observations or, or solution which is considered with observation? We find this is a unique choice. You cannot choose any others. So this accurate for number. This accurate for the choice we get. You you generate here. We we expect this. This is observation result. The consistence. If you choose any others, you see you get this one. It's of course quite different this one. So this is con consistent with what they observe, they get there, but we also identify one class of initial conditions. This is the only choice. So why we have to choose this one? So now this is a question we try to answer. Why physically only this choose this one? We can get a consistent solution. <coughs> Okay, so this actually, like what I said, uh, we apply it to many cases. The K inflation, people actually get this one, but they use one turning point. 
like what I said, it's a two, third turning point plus two singularities. So we get a better solution. When we apply local quantum cosmology, we, we get solutions. Einstein square tensor and all the things. Recently, we use quantum model to black holes. So this actually, people are very interested in this point because this actually can directly connect with our observations. This is all the girls and waves, of course. So we do this. So uh, now I'm actually come to the conclusion. Uh, so this actually, uh, we can use this measure to accurately calculate the power spectrum for the loop of quantum cosmology. So if you are familiar with this part, you will see normally the problem becomes extremely complicated. Uh, Dr. Ward knows once you learn quantum, you, you are involved with the quantum gravity, everything becomes a mess. So this accurately, when you apply to cosmology, the same thing. So we also can calculate the gravitational waveform and all those quantum model black hole and the energy uh, eigenvalues of uh, quantum mechanics I just show you. And we are applying to other methods. This actually, uh, uh, this uh, I already told you, this is our contribution. We just uh, try to combine our sacred uh, method with the uh, variation principle. This actually, if you are familiar with quantum mechanics, it's very easy to understand. So this is actually the things. Now, actually, uh, before uh, both we joined LSU as postdocs, we were working with this one, the PT potential for the uh, local quantum cosmology. This is actually we got, you see. There's an absolute difference. So uh, recently, actually, uh, we picked up this program with the three of our graduate students, Jian, uh, Jamel, and Ray. Jan's Dr. Kerr a great students. So uh, uh, Jamel and Ray are working uh, with me. So we are working in this uh, uh, case. Then you can see, actually, we just uh, try to, again, step by step, minimize the errors and uh, do everything. You see, this is actually the G function. We have, uh, in this case, we have two turning points. This case, we have only one, but it's double. There is no turning point. So this really depends on Beta Gerson K, U K, Latin K. We started the PT potential case. This is no exact solution. Try to see how we can solve the problem. Then this actually is a unique choice of uh, 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 the, this is a constant. So this is a constant appears from actually uh, Q. Uh, Q actually, Q like this actually Q equal Q zero square over this hyperbolic. Yeah. Uh, you can see this actually what we got here. Um, much better than before. This is actually our first order approximation solution is the exact solution. So if you actually uh, consider the difference, this opposite, this actually the difference, relative difference, you see actually this maximum point is 0, 0. .0. So less than 0, 0.01 percent in error. So uh, we consider this quite good. So now we also actually try to apply this case to, for example, we consider only one equation. What's happen if we have a copy? This is this actually we know in, when we study gravitational waves, in some modified series of uh, Einstein, uh, gravity, you get, will get this actually copying equation. This is a secret tensor serial copying equation. So we want to see how we can generate this, our method to this one. And also, I just mentioned, for example, uh, this is a case of signature chain. This is a mathematician very, uh, very useful in this case. We wanted to see, can we get a first our solution, then see what's the boundary conditions we can get. So there are lots of challenging questions. Uh, we feel we are obliged to actually really deal with it because we just like uh, develop the server. So I hope uh, in the future I have uh, more things to report. So, okay, I will stop here. Thank you. Okay, we have about <coughs> 10 minutes left for questions. Questions for Dr. Wong? Uh, yeah, I, yep. I asked a general question about the, uh, the entanglement. So. Um, since since we saw uh, the experiments that there's no hidden variables, 
uh, and it's non-local. Uh, can you comment on some possible explanations for uh, this kind of non-locality, like uh, like maybe uh, an extreme one? I th I think of as uh, uh, the entangled particles are connected to, by wormholes, and yeah, so. The entanglement, uh, I think, uh, uh, if you just consider, let's say, one simple example, perhaps it's not uh, so difficult to understand. But uh, you want to really understand this, I mean, this is a very complex case. For example, uh, if let's consider like what uh, Einstein considered, uh, two particle system, uh, two electrons. I just consider the, the, the spins. Normally, you should have also included the space function. There are two parts, right? But the speed, once you, you put them together, you will see the spin part I can always make independent, not copying with the angle momentum. So that my total spin angle momentum always can serve. This actor does not care where you are. So what's your wave function, space wave functions? So this actor from point of view of quantum mechanics. So I just simply talk about the probability of finding the particles spin up, spin down. So then you can measure. But remember, in quantum mechanics, we really only probabilities. So if you are coming to this acre, Copenhagen's interpretation, the table actually, before I touch the table, the table has a probability here. But the table can be any place. So when I touch the table, this has become 100% here because I touch this one. The wave function collapse to the case, the table is here, right? So this actually from a quantum mechanical point is not very difficult to understand in terms of wave function. Wave function actually expand the whole space and uh, in time. But like what I said, once you consider Einstein case, you say we actually copying actually the micro Scopic physics with a microscopic physics, which means we have quantum mechanics plus the two particles far away with a larger distance, right? So, but uh, individual each of them is where I'm still described by wave function, right? This is the photons, here are the photons, or here are electron neutrons. So, how do you understand, or how, yeah, let's see, how do you understand this? My understanding really comes to the quantum, quantum gravity. You need to quantize gravity, quantize both, because this distance involves space time. I understand the experimental relativity, the speed of light actually is a micro, microscopic, classical case. Yeah, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it's a really, yeah, thought provoking. Uh -huh. I'll extend on that question too. It sounds like um, Lenny Susskind has been one of those that was proposing the uh, equation um, ER equals EPR. Okay. And uh, ER being Einstein Rosen, uh -huh. Einstein Rosen bridge, that were the wormhole effect. Okay. And, but, and, and E equals. It. So he was proposing that as the solution. But it seems like you've, you were mentioning cases where. Um, that, that wouldn't apply, where two in, objects are entangled that were never really in contact with each other. Because his idea was the bridge starts where they're in contact and move away. Uh -huh. But you're saying it's been found entanglement where they never were close to yeah, each other. Yeah, this is actually... that counts out that. Yeah, yeah this is actually the last leg from... Them, right? Yeah. If, if they don't have to start together, though. But the wheel function is still actually right, yeah. uh, interact with each other. Yeah. And I, didn't, I didn't know about yeah. that. It's interesting. Uh-huh. The, the wormhole case, I think, is really amazing. Even in loop of quantum gravity, you will find a wormhole. But of course, there the, the sacred prong side. It's not a really big uh, 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 microscopic side. Other questions? Anything else on, on the uh, UAA? <laughs>
It's not a really, according to the last experiment, you will find it's not necessary. So this is the, the conclusion what they got. Oh, sorry, here. You see here, uh, uh, this is the first one. Oh, sorry. You see here, this this actually what a, the, their conclusion is. Uh, we experimented in ten or thirty parabolic particles, which have never been dimension covered by any other means. So this actually the narrow. Actually, this demonstrates that the quantum entanglement requires the entangled particles need to come from the common sources, like what you said. And all of no two actually have interacted in the past. Well, uh, I mean, I, I was not really worried about them coming from the same source or, uh, you know, pull them apart, but my worry is that they need to be causally connected, right? It's not necessary. So that's actually the, the, the EPR paradox. Yeah, this is exactly the, the main point. This is the point I want to show. Einstein said you cannot connect them actually uh, uh, when they far or so far away. You, the human cannot, can, cannot actually connect by light. Their experimental show the distance between them cannot connect by any kind of signal, including light. But still, the quantum entanglement there. When you measure the particles, one spin up, another spin has to down. No matter how far this two particles are away. Yeah, so that's why we, we exclude, they exclude this possibility of propagating. So this is a pure quantum entanglement. In the sense, this is a wave function interacting. So for example, in quantum mechanics, we normally What's the causality? I mean, you can, you can get a unitarity or a probability needs to be one or whichever. Yeah. So. But it's still for them here. This is pure quantum mechanics, right? You're trying, to, you're trying to say that uh, Zeilinger's experiment is not valid. He says what you said is not valid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly, for example, the, the, this is an EPR paradox. EPR paradox is exactly from it here. You, if you use the synthesis Einstein server, there are no interaction. For example, Alex actually measures the particle A, spin up. Before Alex gets a chance to inform, or oh, this is spin A, particle, get actually send a signal to spin B, to say, OK, I'm, my spin is up, your spin has to be done. Bob already measures spin up. This is actually the experiment did it is. Okay? So now why is a quantum entanglement? So how do, how do we interpret this in terms of Einstein theory? We do not know because Einstein has a EPR paradox. That's exactly his question. He said you cannot do this. But they did this. <laughs> Oh, this is my shooting. This is what I think about everything. You see how you can really put a Einstein theory uh, with the quantum mechanics together. Quantum gravity is actually exactly doing this, right? You are copying these two together. Thank you, man. Yeah. So this is like a very amazing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Take this off. Mm -hmm.